I'm back. What's up, everybody? It's Steve DeCasa here, and uh, I've finally decided to do another video. I've got a request for something, which I'll get to in a second, but I just wanted to have a little disclaimer out there. Um, I don't have my Sony V1U anymore. I've actually traded it in, and I've gotten a 5D Mark II. Sony V1U, great camera, got me through a lot of good stuff. I did really good projects on it, but it was time to uh, trade the old girl in and uh, move on up with uh, production quality. So now I have a 5D and I'm really excited with it. I'm still, get, I'm, still um, I, I'm, I'm still getting things together to shoot with it. I've shot a short film on it so far, a couple of live events with it, um, little things, just still building my reel. So I'll get all that stuff up soon. You'll see copies of that. I actually went to um, this Guinness World Record event in the city two days ago, um, New York City, for those of you who don't know. Um, it was the most ballerinas on point at one time. It was pretty cool, and I had a couple of friends who were involved in it, and that was sick. Uh, so that should be up soon. I hope stay tuned for that. Um, but as for now, it's uh, if anyone has requests about the 5D Mark II or anything like that, please let me know. But uh, I've got a, a, a request. A lot of people have sent me requests and questions about exporting and about um, getting your things out there. It's, great thing to know, you know, it's a, and it can be very confusing to get to get your stuff compressed down and out on DVD. So I'll just jump right in. A uh, user named Great at Everything, a gentleman named Eric from Montreal, he, um, first of all, he shot stuff with the Canon XHA1, I can never freaking pronounce that, and he shot it in the 24 uh, frames mode, and um, apparently the settings for the V1U, a video that I posted for that, work on that. I didn't even know that, so thank you for, 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 for letting me know that. That's cool. So I guess the, four, the 422 uh, Apple ProRes codec works for that to bring it in as 24p. He, was, uh, he couldn't figure out a way to get it in as 30p. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have another video you can check out. It's, it's up online. It's those settings. Um, but so he's, good. he's got that done. He's got the footage in. He's got it edited. Now he wants to get it out on DVD. Now the first thing I say to people who have shot stuff in HD and want to put it on DVD is this. Big disclaimer. DVDs are not HD. Okay, if, you're, if you know that and you're cool with that, continue watching this video because I'm going to show you how to get your footage, the HD footage, onto DVD. I'll show you my way of doing it. Um, if you're not cool with that, you're like, wait a second, I thought DVDs were HD. And you might be saying to yourself, how could anyone think that DVD is HD? Don't they know that Blu-ray is HD? There are people out there who don't know this, and I'm not judging them, I'm not saying anything, I'm just letting them know. It's, technology is, is crazy, you know, Blu-ray, Bluetooth. My mom's asking me that all the time. What's the difference between Blu-ray and Bluetooth? And I'm like, well, one of them's a wireless connectivity thing, and the other one is footage, you know? Plus, my mom doesn't sound like that, so whatever. <laughs> I'm embellishing. So yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there in the world, and um, some people might not know that a DVD is just standard definition, only six, you know, only uh, 480 lines of resolution, whereas a Blu-ray has, you know, 10, 1080. Um, and also, um, a Blu-ray holds 25 gigabytes up to 50 gigabytes if you have a dual-layer uh, Blu-ray. Blu and so, HD footage is usually a lot bigger than SD footage, so it has to fit on something that's that's bigger. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. I'm going to get some 1080p, 24 frames a second material together. It's a short thing. Um, and I'm going to uh, show you the way I do it to export it out of Final Cut, bring it into DVD Studio Pro, which not, not, everyone might not have, but if you, this is for people with DVD Studio Pro and uh, exporting from DVD Studio Pro to a DVD. Um, let's do it. Okay, so here we are. Um, I apologize for any weird looking stuff because I'm not using capture software. I am just filming the uh, monitor of my computer so that I can record sound simultaneously and do stuff. I just find it easier this way. Um, so here we are in Final Cut. I have here on the timeline some uh, 24p HDV footage that I shot with the VU. VU, VU I still have the footage. So what I like to do usually is I like to put about a second of black here and a second of black back here. I set my in and my out points. So you come click over here with the thing, you click here, hit the letter I on the keyboard, come over to here, click the letter O on the keyboard, you know. So what I did was I just gave myself a second of black here 
and a second of black here because you are going to export, you're going to put on DVD anything that's in between the two out points. So that's number one. What I like to do just because I'm kind of paranoid is to ensure that what's going out is what I want to go out. I like to highlight everything. I come up to File, Export, using Compressor. Now remember we're going to DVD. Also remember that it will not be HD. So over here is their settings. You have lots of different things. You have formats, workflows, online stuff, Apple devices like iPod. We want to go to DVD. So we open up the DVD um, folder here. And there's a lot of different settings. You've got DVD best quality 120 minutes, DVD best quality 150 minutes. Best quality means that it will it'll do a couple of different passes. It'll it'll as it's exporting the footage, it'll go through all the footage once, it'll go through all the footage twice, probably three times to get a really crisp look. You want to do best quality. Now, depending on how big your footage is, do you do you have 90 minutes of footage? You can get 90 minutes of footage onto a DVD. Um, you, you know, so right now I only have 28 seconds because let's just pretend that your footage is like five minutes, 10 minutes long. You, you, you don't have to compress 120 minutes of footage down onto a DVD. You only have, you know, a couple of minutes. So you pick the littlest one. The littlest one right now is 90 minutes. Um, for me, for right now, just for to save myself time, I'm going to use the fastest encode, which means it's only going to do one pass. So I'm going to use the fastest encode. You should probably use best quality. What you do is you click and hold on the folder, drag it over into where it says drag settings and destinations here. Drop it in. Now look what it does. It is going to render out two, one, two, two separate um, files. It's going to render out the footage on an MPEG-2 compression at 6.2 megabits per second, pretty good, and it's going to render out the footage here. It's also going to separately render out the audio, Dolby Digital Audio right here. So you are in turn going to get two files. One of them is going to be a video file which has no audio on it, and the other one is going to be a audio file with no video on it. This is made in conjunction with DVD Studio Pro so that you have to use DVD Studio Pro to stitch these two back together. We'll get to that soon. So for compressor here, right here, it's you've probably seen my other compressor video. Right here is the word source. That's where the footage is going to be downloading to. You want to right click on this and change the destination. I'm going to put it on the desktop for now. You could go to other and find a spot for it. I'm going to go to the desktop for both of these. Oh, and it puts them both there too. You could also change the name of each of the files by clicking on this. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't really need to. What you can also do is you can click on the uh, thing and over an inspector here, it's going to tell you everything that's happening. Now for me, you can see that the width and height right here is going to be 720 by 480, which will be widescreen, but 480 is it's SD. It's not going to be 1440 or 1920 by 1080. It's going to be 720 long by 480 uh, down. So the st it is standard definition. It's still going to look good. It's not going to look, you know, HD. What you want to do is you come over here and click submit. I know it should say compress, but it says submit. This is going to pop up. It's just going to tell you where you're going again. Submit it again. And it's going to start um, compressing. So here's the, that's what it does. And Look at that, it's already done. That's how, oh no, that was just the audio. Okay, so here, now it's now it's compressing. So I'll save you the trouble of um, having to wait for this and I'm gonna edit this out. Okay, so here we are in DVD Studio Pro. This is gonna be a straight up basic lesson, just the first time someone's even opening up this program. Um, I'm not gonna go crazy into menus or anything because you can do a lot with this program. So here we are opening a new file. Uh, what you want to do is, the first thing you need to do is you need to get those files that you rendered into the program. So you want to go up to File here and Import. And in this program, in DVD Studio Pro, they're called Assets. They're not called Files or whatever. They're called Assets because you can, when you make a menu, you can put a JPEG in there. You can put other kind of crazy stuff in, this stuff in there. So it, it, it says the word Asset. Uh, these programs are all weird with their names, you know, Submit and shit. Anyway, so... I'm gonna bring in the files, here they are, and to do what I just did, I held shift and I click that down, and I'm gonna import those. Um, so here they are, here's the two files, the video one and the audio, and you can see the little thumbnail telling you what's what. Um, we're in the menu uh, portion right now, there's different tabs, there's the menu, so right now, I guess, you know, there's, there's viewer, 
graphical connections. We can keep it in the viewer for now because we're not going to do a menu. No menu on this one. If you want to do a menu, well, we can, we can do a whole other video for that. So I'm just going to click on the viewer. I'm going to drag the video file down into the V1. I'm going to drag the audio file down into the A1 there. And you can make more tracks if you have more, but it's a DVD. It's, DVD. it's not editing. All your tracks of audio should be already compressed into that one file. So if we click uh, on anywhere on this uh, gray area right here, we can take a look at it in the viewer. We can hit play and we can see, you might not hear it on the camera, but I can hear in my headphones that there is audio playing. Um, so it looks good. The audio is playing in sync with the, with the video. Boom. Let's stop it for now. Now, to, what I like to do is I like to, when I give a DVD to someone like this, I don't want to spend time making a menu. I like to put the DVD in the, in the player and it'll automatically play. Don't have to worry about hitting any buttons or anything like that. It takes all the guesswork out of it. To do that, you want to come up and click on the Connections tab, and you have all these different uh, sources and targets. Now, what all that is is in the timeline here, you can set um, key, you can set markers and things, and you know you can set your chapters, and you have to tell DVD Studio Pro what that where you know what this button is going to do. Like, because there's a button involved, a remote, you know, when you're doing DVD DVDs, what each button will do. So there's a source and there's a target. The source would be the button and the target would be where that button's going to go to. So for this one, you have this right here, first play. So when you put the DVD in, what's it first going to do when it plays? Right now, as a default setting, it's set for the menu. So if you were to put the DVD in, first play is menu. There is no menu on ours, so we want to change that. We can right click on here and now this is kind of confusing. Where our, where our targets are. Now right here as a default, my target is track one, as you can see right here, and it's also track one, and it's also chapter one is the first marker. Now I can edit that, I can make it whatever, I can edit my track name, but right now as a default, as a first glance, it's track one, chapter one. Click it, now the first play will be track one, chapter one. You, what you can also do to check this out is you can go to simulate. Now. Now, a simulate means as if we just put in the DVD. So here's our DVD controls, here's our DVD viewer. It's like we just put the DVD in the player. So if we hit play, stop maybe, and then play, it's going to automatically play. I'll show, I'll do it one more time. So simulate. I'm not going to touch a thing. I'm just going to drag it over. So there was that one second of black, and that's what's going to happen. It's going to automatically play. Now, just to save yourself the trouble, I like to make all these things track one, chapter one. So if you hit the title button on your DVD player, it's going to go to menu, but there is no menu because we don't have time to make one. So we're just going to make that chapter one. If you hit the menu button on your menu, on your uh, DVD remote, it's going to bring it right back to the beginning. So we just take all the, the guesswork out of it. So let's simulate again. We'll simulate. It's going to automatically play. If I stop it and hit the menu button, it's going to just automatically play. If I stop it and hit the title button, it's just going to automatically play. So I set all these buttons to be just the beginning of the video. And that's how it's going to work. So after that, pretty much, you're good. You I mean, we just simulated what's going to happen. After that, you just want to come over here, click Burn. And uh, it's going to ask you to please insert acceptable DVD in the recordable media. And I don't think I need to film anymore. You basically just take a blank DVD. Um, remember now with Macintosh, if, this is very important actually, big disclaimer, if you have Macintosh, go out and buy DVD minus R's. Now I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up here. It's DVD minus R. That's for Macintosh. If you have a PC, if you're using this on a PC for some reason, you need DVD plus R. Don't ask me why, but I found this out the wrong way. So there, there that's, uh, that's what you need to know. Macintosh DVD minus R's. Go out and buy them. Buy a good brand. Buy Sony. Buy you know something good because DVDs can be shitty. DVD plus R's are for PC. I probably should have mentioned that in the beginning, but just a little help for you guys. DVD minus R. Um, so there you go. You want to just put the thing in, hit burn. It's going to take a little while, and then you are pretty much done. So happy compressing, happy editing. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm Steve DeCasa. Peace.